What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the long-awaited sequel to Avatar and that is Avatar The Way of Water. Written and directed by James Cameron and starring a returning cast of people like Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana. You also have people in here like Kate Winslet, Cliff Curtis, Britton Dalton, Jamie Flatters and many many more. What's going on everybody and welcome to my spoiler free review for the sequel to Avatar, a long long awaited sequel coming 13 years after the events of the first film or the release of the first film that was not only a game changer in terms of visual effects but also in the 3D realm that completely captivated audiences in that time and would lead to a just string of a bunch of movies releasing films in 3D afterwards that were not made for 3D or made with 3D in mind. So all these years later 3d has kind of fizzled out as a thing that people go to see in movies because it became a thing that would give you a headache or never really overly impressed people so we kind of got back to a place where going to see a regular film in 2d or just regular digital is exactly what people wanted to do and you know 3D platforms had kind of just died out. And here we are all these years later getting a new installment in the Avatar franchise, the first sequel of five. So there's gonna be six of these movies all together once we're all said and done. I believe that's the plan. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to say I loved this film. I was a huge fan of the first Avatar film, seeing it almost 10 times in theaters and was completely captivated with it every single time. After that, I've seen the film multiple times since at home. And it's easily one of the first films I ever put onto my TV to test out a brand new TV every single time I get a new TV to make sure that the color, the brightness, and everything is exactly where I want it to be. I love that first film, and I have a whole video where I praise it and talk about what I like about the movie and what I don't like about it, and I never really understood the negatives that people had about that film, even if it does have a narrative that is familiar and maybe reminiscent of things like Pocahontas or Fern Gully or Dances with Wolves. I think that that movie just brings so much more new to the table and takes us into a whole new world that is completely completely beautiful and has great world building, a lot of lore, and as a huge fan of sci-fi and fantasy, it's just right up my alley. So naturally, I was incredibly excited to see what James Cameron had in store for the sequel with The Way of Water, and I'm happy to say I loved this film. I was thrilled from beginning to end. I never felt the three hour runtime. I was completely captivated, never bored at all, and I'm just happy to say I had a great time at the movies. This is the kind of movie that made me want to start this YouTube channel. This is the kind of movie that that got me into movies, got me excited to talk with my friends about movies. It was movies like this that got me excited to go get some popcorn, go get some soda, go get some candy and sit in a theater and watch movies. And I'm just happy to be able to sit here all these years later watching a sequel to a film that really meant a lot to me when I was still back in high school. And here I am now, just a few months away from becoming 30 years old, and I get to dive deep into a sequel to Avatar. And I'm just happy to say I love the film. One of the things you're gonna hear from a lot of people when it comes to a lot of the criticisms of this film, uh, one of the main things is that maybe the story is a little bit familiar. And I will get into that in a little bit, staying away from spoilers, of course. Uh, but you know, even for the elements that do feel familiar here, similar to maybe certain elements that felt familiar to other stories in the first film, even for those elements, I think that this movie, similar to the first one, just expands upon the world building, the lore building, and really diving deeper into this world. And I think the most notable thing that everybody's gonna be talking about are the visuals. This, without a doubt, is the greatest visual effects heavy film that I've ever seen in my entire life in terms of the visuals. The visual effects, the CGI are top tier and there is no film and no franchise that can match up to what I just saw in this movie and I think that that's part of what James Cameron has always been about. Even with all the big Marvel movies and Star Wars and things that I love, there is nothing I've ever seen on the big screen that looked like what I just watched. This movie is beautiful from beginning to end with absolutely captivating CGI and motion capture work that is seamless with human characters standing right next to these CG models that you completely at a certain point forget that you're watching a film that is all CG characters. The movie is gorgeous to look at and the special effects of this film are top tier. So I have to give a huge praise to James Cameron and his team for creating easily one of the most visually compelling films that I have ever seen in my entire life. Even for elements that maybe again felt redundant, even for elements of the story that felt a little familiar, 
I was always captivated because the film was gorgeous and all the money and time that was put into this movie and technology is on screen. You know, every here and there when you hear about a movie that had a huge budget and you see the movie and you're like, where did that budget go? I promise you that you will not be asking that question when you walk out of this movie because you can see exactly where the budget went to in this entire movie. The first film utilized a lot more human characters and even though there are human characters in this film, Predominantly, this film focuses on our Navi characters, the blue people, the blue aliens, and majority of this movie is just VFX heavy. This movie is completely CGI heavy. Majority of the film is CGI, about 98% of it, and it was gorgeous. Every single second of this film is absolutely beautiful to look at. And again, at a certain point, you're not even thinking about the fact that you're... And again, at a certain point, you're not even thinking about the fact that you're looking at CGI. I was completely captivated and lost in this film in terms of its visuals. And yeah, that, that's what I'll say on that. I mean, the visuals alone are enough for the ticket admission, in my opinion. Like going to see this movie just to experience the visuals and the 3D element of this film is exactly what you should pay money for. Beyond everything else, a fun story, a gripping narrative and fun characters, where this movie shines for sure are its visuals. And this is the reason that, in my opinion, we go to the movies. This is the reason, again, that, that I started a YouTube channel. This is the reason that I love the movies. This is the reason I like to get soda, popcorn, and candy and sit in, in that movie theater and watch movies. It's, it's stuff like this. This movie was epic on every scale and the visuals were just absolutely mind blowing. And I'm still gonna be raving about it day after day after day until I go see this movie again because I need to see this movie again very, very soon. This is definitely a movie that's gonna get repeat theater experiences for sure. Now, in terms of the narrative, I think the trailers have done a really great job of staying away from what this movie is all about. And I saw a couple of reviews prior to the movie actually releasing, which was, I guess, my own fault. But uh, I was hoping that people would stay spoiler free. And for the most part, the ones I watched didn't really lean into any heavy spoilers, but they did kind of talk about certain things that the trailers show that I didn't really know what was happening there. And they expanded on it a little bit more than I would have liked them to. So. For that sake, I'm not gonna be doing that here. And instead, I'm just gonna give the base premise of what's going on here, which you can see in the trailer. So this movie opens up and we're reintroduced to Jake Sully and Neytiri, as well as being introduced to their children for the very first time and learning a little bit about them, where they've been, what's been going on since the first film. And not long into the film, a threat reappears and they have to actually go into hiding as this threat is coming directly for them. And because of that, they end up going to a new Navi crew of people, a new tribe of people that are specifically a water tribe of Navi who have been evolved to actually adapt to the world of the water. And now they have to come and kind of learn their culture and learn to be one of these new Navi as they are Navi of the forest and now they have to be with the Navi of the water. And this is where the familiar element from the first film kind of comes into play where similar to the first film where Jake Sully came into this new culture and had to learn about how to be a part of this culture. Now our Navi characters that we followed in the first film as well as their kids have to learn from this new culture of Navi individuals and learn how to adapt to living in the waters and around the waters and with the creatures of the water. And with that, you have scenes in this film that definitely echo scenes from the first film. Kind of reminded me of Star Wars where certain chapters rhyme with one another so there are elements here that definitely feel similar to scenes and elements from the first film but it felt very intentional it felt like something that was supposed to rhyme it felt like something that was supposed to be like what happens to the father will happen to the son kind of situation which again you do see in franchises like star wars and i really liked that i never really felt like it was redundant like some people said i, I liked the fact that this movie kind of echoes certain beats from the first film i felt like it was thematic and i felt like it flowed well for these characters and what was going on here so that element i really enjoyed and so yeah, I won't get too much more into the story. I don't want to tell you guys anything else because I, I feel like the trailers again have done such a good job of being very vague. They didn't release a bunch of trailers that had a bunch of you know story elements where you got further into the marketing cycle and by the time the movie was coming out, you saw like 10 trailers that gave you the whole story. I think that James Cameron and his team, you know, trusted in the visuals and a very emotional, just kind of uh, feeling kind of trailer, something that's far more about tone and vibe, uh, more so than actually kind of giving away story beats. And I feel 
like certain reviewers have already dropped some reviews that I feel give too many little hints and nods at what's happening here. But that's the base premise of the film. And I just, I really enjoyed it. I found it to be a good time. The movie's three hours long. There's a lot of really great character development work that's done here. There's again, beautiful cinematography, incredible, incredible motion capture work, top tier performances. I really, really enjoyed the visual effects. Like that's part of what makes this movie absolutely phenomenal. But the visual effects and the CGI and the motion capture is really nothing without the fantastic performances. So I definitely want to just give massive kudos and praise to the stars that are in this film and all the various actors and actresses that played various roles, especially in the motion capture work here because they they really gave it all. They really, really gave phenomenal performances here. I was never bored. I was never taken out of the film. I was completely glued to the screen from the visuals to the story to the characters and then also to the music. Simon Fraglin comes in to play the music in this one. He's the composer of this film and uh, he had to step in since James Horner did pass away in 2015 who did the original score. And this film, like a lot of franchise films, definitely reprises a lot of music from the previous film, uh, but also has a lot of new music as well. And I think that Simon Fraglin did a really great job of taking what James Horner had done and really expanding upon that while also using those really familiar themes that we enjoy from the first film in really impactful ways in this movie. Something else I think people need to take into consideration when it comes to this one is that the first Avatar film was, you know, meant to just be a one-off. James Cameron obviously hoped that he could make sequels, but he had no idea if it was actually going to be able to happen. So, you know, he had to make a movie that was able to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And if that's where it ended, that we have to be okay with that. So this movie, differently, because there are four sequels coming after this, um, does have a little bit more of an open-ended element to this film. It's definitely not a movie that necessarily stands on its own as strongly as the first film, where it has a beginning, middle, and end, and kind of has like a really solid closure. There is closure to the narrative that we've been following, but there's also a very big open-ended element to this movie, as this is meant to roll into more sequels uh, that I'm very, very, very excited to see. And one character I definitely want to talk about without getting into the spoilers of the story and all that is a character named Spider, who was a human character that as a toddler was left behind after the event of the first film when all the humans were sent back to Earth. And so now he's grown up on Pandora alongside all these Navi. He's always walking around in a loincloth. He's got dreads. Uh, he's, you know, got to go out there with that, that mask on in order to breathe. And he's far more in line with the Navi. But when certain things start to reappear in his life, here he's kind of has to make some rough decisions as far as where he stands and yeah i won't get too deep into this, the story here with that character but i am very curious to see what they do with the character of spider that is his name i'm very curious to see what they do with him moving forward uh, i thought that he was an interesting and compelling character in the movie but he was also a bit of a wishy-washy character and i am very curious to see how they expand upon him moving forward but beyond that overall i enjoyed this film i found it to be a, just a visual spectacle i think that james cameron continues to prove to audiences why he's a top tier filmmaker whether it be aliens whether it be t2 judgment day titanic the first avatar the list goes on and on the abyss anything you can think about honestly he is such a great director and he's just continually proving that and i'm just so excited that he spent so much time focusing on this avatar franchise which may likely be the last big thing that he works on you know because he is, he is a bit of an older guy already at this point and he's dedicated a lot of time to this franchise so i really am looking forward to seeing what he does with the sequels what he's kind of concocting for everybody and uh you know i'm just happy to see this franchise flourishing there was a lot of people at the theater today people painted in blue wearing avatar shirts and you know avatar ears on their head and all that kind of stuff there was a lot of people excited to go see this movie and it's always great to go to the movie theaters and seeing the movies theaters thrive in my opinion. I, I love going to see a movie theater thriving and see the business is booming uh, as a fan of the theatrical experience. And I love that James Cameron wants to make movies that people feel they need to go to the theaters to see. And this is definitely a movie that you need to go to the theaters to see. You need to see this film in 3D at least the first time because it really just completely engulfs you. And it's, it's not 3D like anything else. It's absolutely mind blowing. It completely engulfs you in the movie and it gives you a whole different layer of immersion that regular digital screenings are just not gonna be able to give to you or just waiting to watch this at home on streaming is just not gonna give to you. So what did you guys think about Avatar The Way of Water? Definitely wanna hear what you guys have to say. If any of you are interested in hearing a more spoiler breakdown of things where I can be a little bit more loosey goosey about what I say, definitely leave a comment down below. If I have enough comments about that, maybe I'll do a live stream or maybe just do a 
long spoiler discussion where I go see the movie again and maybe kind of have some notes written out and talk about things on a more specific level. Uh, but for just this course, just straight out of the movie review, I didn't want to spoil anything for you guys and I just kind of wanted to give my general thoughts. Overall, loved it, had a blast. Can't wait to hear what people have to say about this. From what I've seen, most people seem to be really on board with this movie, even if the story wasn't 100% working for them. Um, they were really engulfed in just the, the visuals and the whole experience of the movie because this movie is epic. This movie is exciting. It's visually compelling. It's thrilling. And the last half of this movie is just action packed. There's definitely something else I want to mention here is the action in this film is top, top tier. I was completely gripped from the action, which again, going hand in hand with how good this movie looks, I was just completely engulfed. I was completely engulfed. One last thing I do want to mention that I should have probably mentioned earlier in this review, and hopefully if you've gotten this far into the review, you care to hear this. But one of the things I would say maybe didn't work about this movie at times was the high frame rate. Now, for anybody who's not familiar, uh, most movies that are played in the movie theater are going to be played in 24 frames per second. And uh, back, you know, I think with the Hobbit films, uh, when Peter Jackson was doing those, um, he introduced kind of doing a higher frame rate uh, where it's at 48 frames per second. And sometimes it makes the film look a little bit weird, almost like surreal, almost too real at times where it kind of gives it this bit of a fakey look, even if it looks incredible. And we have seen other films like Gemini Man and the the last few years did that as well and and now this one is, is doing the same thing and parts of the movie are in 24 frames per second and parts of the film is in 48 frames per second and there are times where it felt like when it was in 48 frames per second when it's a big shot of a location or you know some sort of landscape uh, that it really looked beautiful and I thought it really worked but sometimes when it's a little bit more up and close on the characters and the characters are moving really fast it kind of felt like it had a bit of a motion blur effect that your TV has when you have that motion blur setting on that I always turn off the second that I get on any TV. Um, so there were moments where I felt like the high frame rate sometimes kind of hindered the movie's visuals slightly, but that's honestly such a minor gripe in a movie that I honestly had a blast in. And uh, this is definitely a movie that has easily made its way into my top 10 for the year for sure. So a big thanks to you guys for watching. Leave your thoughts in the movie down below. Hit that like button, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye